this is Jim Queen, aka Game Show Guru 84. I want to talk about a game show that I really respected from Bob Stewart ever since, and this is not the pyramid. This was a series he did that I thought was amazing. He did a series called Three on a Match, hosted by Bill Cullen, broadcasted in NBC Studio 6A in New York, broadcasted at 1.30 in the afternoon. I I when I first read about this show I thought it was the most dumbest thing I've ever saw in my life but when watching the videos thanks to game over 49 and game over 50 playing uh, about many episodes ever since 1972 to 74 I still think this show is amazing and I thank him for actually uh, airing those episodes you know a few years ago so thank you David again thank you you did a great, you know, it was it was a great show. Loved every minute of it. It was amazing. Pardon me. I really enjoy this program very much. I mean, even if it survived only a few years on NBC, at least it was entertaining. For people who don't know the show, I'll explain as much as I can about this program. The game had three contestants, one champion, and two challengers. The game is to mostly, actually, in the most of the long, the run, the most famous run of it all, was we had to match a prize on a board by a three by four square board. You, what you do is um, each contestant has to bid on how many questions they can answer on a specific category, on three specific categories. So if so, let's say for example, one of the uh, categories is you know ask me anything. Two of you cannot bid the same amount of questions. The maximum being four questions altogether. So if say for example you and I, you know, would uh, bid four questions, the other one can just bid lower by answering just one lousy question or two or three. Each question was mostly a simple true or false answer. If you get all the answers correct by the contract, you get 10 times the bid from all three of you and times that by 10 as the dollar value. The minimum requirement to go to the board is $90 because you have to get one from each uh, dollar value, $20, $30, $40. That makes 90 so there's four colors on the board, red, yellow, blue, and green, and three dollar values, $20, $30, and $40. What you have to do is you have to figure out where this one prize or any prize that goes on the board, and if you get all three, you win that prize and the game. If you win three games, you win the match, $5,000 in cash and prizes, and face two new challengers. Now, in April 23rd, 1973, the format was changed. The only difference was, instead of having prizes on the board, this time using symbols. Simple, simple symbols, you know, like, you know, hats, monster movie, you know, monster characters from, you know, horror movies, um, you know, leading ladies from films, um, fruits, vegetables, instruments of any caliber, you know, anything that was mostly a simple, you know, theme. And if you did the same thing, you know, and it's just mostly the same format, get them by the, you know, answer a series of questions, get up to 20, 30, you know, get, get $90, match the symbols, win the game. Around half, about halfway through the show, they play a little jackpot round. The jackpot round is where any contestant figures out where both halves of a thousand dollar bill, or technically any higher, was on this board. So only ten of those uh, spaces on the board were circles, or I call them circle pegs, which means dud. And if any person finds the first half, gets one chance to find the other half. If they do, they win the jackpot. If not, they add a thousand dollars more. Any player that actually survives seven matches in a row wins five thousand dollars in cash and a brand new car.
an instant match, which would be anything, and find it, ma you know, let's say if, you know, um, the symbols were, let's say, um, like monster film, uh, monster characters. If you found, like, three wolfmen in a row, you would win the game automatically, like in like the Jokers on the Jokers Wild. It's still a great show. It was a great show from the beginning. I enjoyed it, and I think the I think the record, from what I have seen, the record uh, the record holder would be Fred Abraham. Fred Abraham was a um, IRS consultant in and was on the air from February um, 6th through the 12th of 1974. And he won, I think, the record. I think he won about like over 29,000, was like survived like almost five days, or survived five days plus, almost five and a half days. But I enjoyed that show very much. I love the challenge to it. It was a great show, and I think it should have survived a very long run on uh, NBC because everything about it was amazing. You know, the challenge was there, the strategy was there, you know, the game wasn't as difficult, it wasn't short-lived, and it wasn't a quick, like, you know, quick game like you did back in the 60s. And, and this is around, almost around the fall of 1971, when it premiered. I mean, the show premiered on August 2nd, 1971, replacing a series called Joe Gargiola's Memory Game and survived until June 28, 1974. It's still a great game. You know, many, you know, network many uh, NBC affiliates around that time weren't broadcasting that show because of afternoon matinee. I know in Syracuse they never played this series from the beginning, which I thought was very disappointing. But in my opinion, the show was my favorite Bob Stewart game show that has ever been in his great creation. I think he really put a lot of effort to this show. I really think he did very well in the game itself. And I feel that, you know, it should have survived a longer run. And I think it should have been, you know, kind of like the pyramid, you know, had a long run had a great, you know, and everything, but, you know, this is one of Bob Stewart's, you know, of one of my favorite Bob Stewart game shows. There's many others out there that I will discuss on a few videos, you know, around the time, you know, but after Three on a Match, another Bob Stewart game show that happened on NBC called Winning Streak. Winning Streak, in my opinion, is pretty challenging. I really like this show, too. The program was broadcasted on the same day as High Rollers was uh, was premiered on July 1st, 1974, and was canceled the same day as when Jeopardy was canceled on January 3rd, 1975. The program is broadcasted at 10.30 a.m., and the game was this. Winning Street is mostly just trying to play, is mostly what they had to say, like having a winning streak. But here's how the main game was played. I think the main game was pretty quick. Probably this is one of the main reasons why the show failed beyond words. The goal is to mostly have, you know, to try to spell out a word by answering a series of questions. The goal is mostly trying to get a word, like say, like, thing, you know, like for an example, things you would have for breakfast. And you would have to spell it out from 16 letters on the board, like boggle. And if you spell out the word, you win the game. Now, the bonus round lasted two, uh, two forms. The first form, having the, one con the winner of the day, or the winner of the game, play what they call a winning streak. They would choose a number between 1 through 6 on a 16 square board like Press Your Luck. And that would be like their, their dollar value for, uh, the, for the day. 
So it would be like, for example, um, $225. What you have to do is now, for the rest of the, for the rest of the squares on the board, you have to choose, they will show letters. What you have to do is to keep your winning streak, is to keep making words using those letters. So the first few letters will be easy, but then farther down, it becomes a little bit more frustrating. But I enjoyed it because it's kind of using the momentum of actually figuring out what type of words that you can use by using all the letters already been used on the board without spelling the word itself. So if you had the letters T-O-N-E, you can't use tone as its word. You have to actually use a word that is already that hasn't been used. So it's kind of like putting hot streak and you know putting the original hot streak before it was aired and putting you know um, mostly word search or crossword you know lingo inside your mind. And then after that, that's your target. So every time that you would get a word, you would double everything that you have. So you would go 225, 415, so on and so forth until you either quit or until you couldn't get a word. Now if you don't get a word correctly, the chain stops. Now the goal for the second half of this form is now against the champion of the day against the winner of the day. Now you play another series of letters. What you have to do is both of you have to keep spelling out words until one of you either breaks, until someone breaks the chain. Whoever breaks the chain wins the jackpot of whatever was played. So say if, let's say if the jackpot was $6,375. Let's just say that as an example. You still play the same bonus round with different letters this time, and all you have to do is just whoever breaks the chain you know, loses while the other per while the other contestant wins that money and plays against another challenger. I think it was pretty well built, even for 1974. I still think it had a great challenge. I still think it was very challenging. I mean, even with um, only one existing episode that has been played on on YouTube, thanks to Blank Page, I thank him very much for airing it. When I watched it on YouTube, I was very amazed how this show was. I think this show sur should have survived a very long run, even for the same amount of time as The Joker's Wild, a couple years. It was a very challenging game. I think it was very well built. And I think it was impressive that, you know, that you mostly... See, I'm very fascinated with word games. I'm very fascinated by those games, like Scrabble, Wheel of Fortune, you know, Winning Streak, the pyramids, and so on and so forth. Using that type of momentum inside your mind, just putting words in your head. That's the best part of actually playing Winning Street, and I think it should have survived a very long run, and technically it did not. <clears throat> but all I can say is just, you know, Bob Stewart had a really great momentum with that because he did Password on CBS in the 60s, and many other, and the original Price is Right. And in my opinion, I still think that, you know, these shows were very successful, and I think his ideas from those shows did very well with him during the 70s and 80s. So, technically, I still think Three on a Match and Winning Streak are one of my favorite Bob Stewart's, um, you know, bottom of the barrel game shows that he did on, you know, on network television. There's others out there that I will kind of discuss in different fil in different episodes or different videos from now. But I wanted to explain why with, pre you know, with uh, Winning Streak and Triana Match as much as possible until the time being. Well, I thank you all for enjoying this video. Um, I will keep uh, posting up new videos about you know game shows I hate and love at the same time so I hope you enjoy this like it commented thank you so much everybody bye everybody